And the stream is active. So, so Brian, before uh, we were rudely interrupted by uh, reality, yeah. I was going to make a, a, a snarky comment. This is um, already you, this story is unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, I know. Nobody will believe that. Um, I love the uh, the Pulp Fiction soundtrack you play while we do this. And uh, I I look oh, at like... The, uh, okay, it's Fight Club, but that's fine. I want to say, I'm sorry, Fight exactly. Yeah. That's what I meant. Like my, my brain said one thing. I meant to say the Fight Club soundtrack from 1999. Yes, correct. Dust Brothers. Yes. So uh, I love it. My mix, my sound, my music collection is some very up to date and some friggin' archaic stuff. You go like, is this a caveman have this stuff? Not because it's really hip, just because I just don't change. Right. And I was kind of curious. And I brought this up a couple years ago, and I wanted, to, and I thought, let me look at this now. And here we are in 2013. Even farther, dude. <laughs> take me, take me back. So when this came out in 1999, what if would you we wanted do? to choose a soundtrack <laughs> from 13 years ago, I'm gonna go from some of the top films of 1986. I love you. Aliens. Oh yes. Top Gun. Yes. Danger Zone. <laughs> Stand by me. <laughs> Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Oh, yeah. Maybe something for Platoon. Oh, my God. Uh, or I suggest maybe Labyrinth had some great stuff. That's amazing, or dude. maybe Highlander. Highlander so, with so Queen. Forever, or yeah. Pretty in Pink. That's amazing. Uh, <laughs> all right. Look World! I'm, I'm sh- World! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are. Uh, and it's rad. All right. Let me get the, um, it's gnarly, man. the audio side. It's more than rad. gnarly. Yeah, it's completely aggro. Uh, All right, let's do this. And I am talking, hit negative 12. Let me hear Justin talk for a bit. Hey, I'm talking. Yeah, you you hit negative 12. What about you, Andrew? I'm talking out my mouth hole. Let me talk a little bit more. Talk, talk, talk out my mouth hole into the microphone. Okay. All right. I think we're about even. And I'll stop and I'll delete. Well, that's all kind of low. I'll just turn up the, the master here. And then I'll hit a delete. And then I'll hit record. And it's time to get weird. All right. Hold on. Wait a minute. Oh, now we got to do the twaddling. Yeah, we're twaddling it. Uh, boom. Okay. Just retweet well, that. We're, we're, we're twatting it out. Hold on. Yeah. Twat it. Put it in your mom's twat. <laughs> okay, where is uh? I haven't received it yet. <laughs> so much you right. it. <laughs> it was made for your mom, Brian, not you. Oh. <laughs> Did uh? I finally, I finally couldn't wait for season four of Archer to come out on Netflix, so I just bought it for twenty bucks. So good. Uh, that show is amazing. Yeah. Have you? There we go. I have not we, seen the latest season. Uh, but I am going to be in Atlanta on Wednesday, and I just want to kick open their doors and just hug everybody there. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, that's, those are a lot of the same folks who go all the way back to C Lab 2012, right? Or yeah. 20, 2021. Yeah, that's what it was. And then they did Frisky Dingo, and then they, uh, then they, then now they're doing Archer. Uh, funny guys. All right. And girls. Rock. Probably guys. Yeah. <laughs> Something tells me. Although I've had more girls come up to me and tell me they love that show. Uh, yeah. It's, I'm like, I know, like, I have multiple girls, like, oh, I love Archer. Like, they've seen, like, Brian's, like, the first dude to go off about that show. Well, to be honest, like, that show, if you were to rank, like, the five funniest characters, like, Archer's probably the only guy. Yeah. Like, all the other, like, funny characters are all, like, not only, like, very well-written female characters, but also female comedians who have been funny other places before yeah all uh, right we're, we're ready to go one more thing about archer it's just their their brutal unrelenting ability to, to throw <laughs> uh throw a laugh and they don't care if you get it or not like um like okay, whatever let's go ready Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Mr. Justin Robert Young. Coming to you live from Cleveland, Ohio. Woo! Mr. Brian Brushwood. I'm just a big fan of Cleveland, Ohio. Not so much Justin Robert Young. He kind of scares me. He does. He does. 
Well, gentlemen, uh, we would have done one last week, but somebody was in Malaysia or Singapore or some... <laughs> Singapore. Indonesia is where he was in. Well, uh, you're, no. uh, well it's interesting because your, uh, your, your internet, when you were, uh, your locations would come up as Malaysia. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think that might have been because I rented a hotspot that... I don't know. At some point, I got, may have been I got in repeated alerts on my phone from Google saying, hey, someone from from Singapore is trying to log into your NSFW show Gmail. Yeah, yeah. So the, the program, the mail plan program that I have automatically logs into all of my Gmail accounts at once whenever I open the program. And uh, some of them that I share with Brian uh, would repeatedly be hit with uh, suspicious sign-ins from a foreign country. How, how was it? Was it like going into the future? No, it wasn't <laughs> at all. Uh, no, Singapore was really cool. I, I very much enjoyed my time there. It was really fun. Uh, but it's, it's odd because my brother uh, had just done some, uh, just did a, a trip to a or India rather. And he had all these tales that were like, Oh, well, it was really, really fun, but it certainly is far different than what you would imagine, what you know to be America. Like he, he described it as he came back to New Jersey, which is commonly uh, understood as quote unquote the armpit of America, and he was never more happy to get into America's armpit and spend some time, uh, just because of the creature comforts that are absent in in countries like India. And I went to Singapore and. You kind of expect whenever you go somewhere outside of our borders that you're going to get at least some, you know, local flavor. But when I went there and talked to people, I was like, well, I have some time here. Where do I uh, you know, get to experience some of Singapore? And they're like, well, if you have time, do yourself a favor and go to the Universal Studios. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me you went. Tell me you got to experience. No, the, the I didn't go to the Singapore Universal Studios. Hey, because listen, you haven't been on King Kong until you've been on King Kong, like, close to Skull Island. <laughs> yeah, that's a fair point. It's a very fair point. Uh, so, no, I, I spent some time in, uh, in, in Chinatown, which is where my hotel was. I really wasn't there all that long. It was about, you know, 48 hours. And, uh, you know, there were some fun restaurants I went to. The, the Chinese cuisine was certainly closer to what I have heard native Chinese cuisine is than what we would imagine or what we know as Chinese cuisine in America. Uh, but maybe my favorite part about Singapore was something that was, was fairly odd. Uh, I went to a cigar bar called the old Cuban. <laughs> it's just one guy like, Hey, I'm here. It was, it was, it was a nice cigar bar. And uh, one thing I was delighted to, to find was that they had actual Cuban cigars, which are illegal here in America because of the trade embargo. Uh, there, but it was in that fun, fun house mirror uh, way that kind of culture exists in our global world or global culture, but is always different than what we know. That I mean, as me and Andrew grew up very close to Cuba, literally oh, sure. within a really, rap line of really Cuba. close to Cuba, yeah. And you you meet and understand and grow up with Cuban immigrants uh, that would find a place called the old Cuban. Uh, horrifying as it was festooned with Che Guevara uh, uh, posters and iconography, as that to them is like, well, if you were, if a Cuban were to show up here, they would love to see the herald of the revolution that brought such bounty to the island, uh, Che Guevara there uh, on every wall, which was one of those like very funny things to me. That, that, that and was Che what, was born where? Uh, in Argentina, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> See, that's a kind so, of, you guys are so much smarter than me. I, I mean, I guess, well, with Florida-related trivia, for sure. <laughs> no, you just, just leave it at the first part, Brian. <laughs> yeah, no, I, and I will. I will. I'm comfortable with with, with that. I'm totally all right. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. The, the, foreign na the, the foreign national that brought nothing but suffering to their island for decades and decades, uh, that was where the old Cuban was decorated. But uh, Singapore was a, was a fun town, and I will say this. If you are traveling abroad, the new thing to do is to rent a hotspot. Rent a, a uh, cellular hotspot. They do it all over the world now. It was something that I found out. There was a local company that I rented it from 
but it completely erases the problems of foreign travel in terms of getting a new SIM card or unlocking your phone. Don't have to do that anymore. Just rent a local hotspot and you can, uh, it was like $15 a day, very cheap. That is what my, my we're doing the tips up top for Justin <laughs> R. Young. I like uh, Justin's tip is, Here's how to embrace the culture you're familiar with and stay with what you know. Uh, you know what? I am totally okay with that. That sounds like good advice to a guy like me. I'm not mocking it, really. It's kind of what I would do, too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, I'm speaking to my audience. I know what my audience is. I, when, I was in, when I was in Shanghai, I'm like, first, you're like, hey, internet, great. And it's like, all right. And then, it, then you run into the things the Great Firewall won't let you get through. And it's like, why the hell can't I look up Wikipedia or excuse me, IMDb? Oh, really? You know? Like, like that's, yeah, Wikipedia, that's... I get. You know, IMDb, like, really, really, you know. Uh, so, What's, gentlemen, uh, yeah, is there anything weirder than IMDb that uh, I, I assume YouTube and Wikipedia? I would imagine uh, IMDb is a weird one. Any other weird ones? Uh, I mean, there'd be like random websites and stuff you couldn't get through, you uh -huh. know, and that. Uh that was sort of a, an interesting thing. I think now, oh. like in Shanghai, I think they're allowing Facebook or something or because it's like it has a trade zone or something like that. Because like everybody there, like every young person there uses an intranet and can get through to what they want. Right. And it's weird because it's like there, there's no official penalty for doing it. Really? You're not supposed to do it. And then when you do it, then, you know, if they're upset with you, then they can figure out what you did wrong, which is kind of disturbing. Yes. Uh, I, I will say this, that the difference between getting my hotel internet, which I had for the first night in Singapore, and the uh, what I assume to be nationally regulated cellular uh, internet was uh, adult websites. Oh, okay. Ad adult websites were, were uh, inaccessible on the cellular hotspot where they were accessible on the hotel's Wi-Fi. So I don't know what the difference between that is in Singapore. Be sure to send your explanation, Singapore residents, to justinrobertyoung at gmail.com. <laughs> All right. So uh, every now and then you come across an item in the news and you're like, Somebody punking us, you know, was this meant <laughs> for us? Is somebody going out of their way because they know there's a show called Weird Things and we're going to have to cover this? Yeah. And uh, let's go, like, let's hypothetically say we go on a Bigfoot hunt. Theoretically. As if Theoretically. that's something we would do is hunt a supernatural creature. We're in a Bigfoot hunt, all right? And uh, Brian, what do you bring on this Bigfoot hunt? Uh, uh, I, I mean, certainly, uh, uh, weapon, because I assume we're in a rural area, right? Some backwoods yeah, sure. area. Yeah, some food and water. The suburbs, Brian. No, you know, we're just in hanging the around Bronx, middle schools. It's kind of really weird. He's a nuisance. Uh, look, I, I, that, that, that's where Bigfoot's known to be uh, across listen, 110th Street. I love the fact that you guys will punish me both for taking things for granted and for not taking things for granted. There's literally <laughs> nothing I'll say that the two you won't harp on my shit for. Uh, I, I, so I assume some food, some water. Uh, you're going to want some GPS. You're going to want to I, I think a sidearm would be a good thing. The ability to make fire. Okay, the sidearm and the ability to fire are separate. Okay, I wasn't sure if there's a Texas. Yeah, oh, no, 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 yeah, that, that's right. <laughs> and also, thanks for taking all the things that I would take. A, which a little... I'm the next person to be asked. <laughs> Try and list off everybody. I don't know, a tent, uh, a permit to build, a will to live, <laughs> DVDs, <laughs> Betamax, portable Wi Fi. Um, <laughs> portable Wi Fi for $15 a day. Maybe, so, maybe a satellite phone. There you go. So you can call for help. So we have a couple gentlemen who decide to go on a Bigfoot hunt. And uh, apparently Bigfoot was sighted. What? Oh, wait a minute. Do you know what I did not list? <laughs> a camera? <laughs> Is, is, that, is, that the, is that the story? Apparently they didn't that's, bring the camera. That, I can just imagine. 
just like the one panel far side comic of Brian with his pile of things. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's get meta here, Justin. You're the one who is mocking me for taking everything that you would obviously Fair need. Point. And Fair just point. as just Fair as like, point. you've thought of everything. Let me take this Betamax and these DVDs. Look, I'm prepared, Justin. You took all the stuff that you should take. <laughs> And so, so there's the one panel is I've said they're cooking out and staring. There's Bigfoot and there's Justin with his pile of discount electronics. <laughs> I was like, get the camera. He's like, I, I have fight club. I'll so, throw uh, fight Pulp Fiction. <laughs> um, <laughs> so these gentlemen, Brian, not unlike you, apparently they brought everything for their Bigfoot sighting, including a sidearm. Did not bring a camera. Oh, my God. Poor guy. So you see Bigfoot in the forest. What do you do? Well, if you only have a sidearm and you don't have a camera, it would seem to me like the person who bagged a Bigfoot might be able to say, oh, I thought it was a bear. I was only illegally poaching. I didn't know I killed the only living specimen of. So, so Brian, you and I are going through the forest, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, hey, you hear that? You're like, what? I go look over there. And you look over there and you see something through the bushes, kind of shaggy, kind of scary looking. What do you do? Uh, I shoot it instantly. No, shoot you, him instantly. No, no, you gotta you gotta figure out what it is, right? So it's like you're like you're like, well, I would assume it's a bear, right? So I I'd probably run because I'm a coward, whether I have a gun or not. I'm going on your first impulse. Yeah, you just draw, shoot it. All you right. shot. Okay. I I, I should have thought that through. I hope I'm okay. No, you shot. <laughs> Yeah, you're stand your ground with Bigfoot law. <laughs> it's Justin Robert Young. Oh, no, yeah. what have I done? Uh, funny, funny you should say that. You're like, oh, let's tell him. Oh, he went to go take a... P- oh, no. Oh, no. Oh. Wait, were hear, these people out? The, like, 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 did they put as their away message, like, going to hunt for Bigfoot, <laughs> BRB? Like, like, there was a stated intent they were hunting for Bigfoot? Well, you survive. <laughs> and uh you can you can vouch for them apparently or not an apparent hunt for bigfoot in the woods of oklahoma went wrong after a man reportedly heard a barking noise turned around and shot at his friend in the back oh my god one of the men told authorities they were hunting for the mythical beast in the woods of rogers county <laughs> the wounded man allegedly shot by the 21 was shot by 21 year old omar was not named but he's expected to survive Wow. And with a, with a hell of a story to boot. Yeah, hey, so apparently he's expected the, the to guy, enjoy they free tried to beers. cover it up by throwing the gun into the pond and this, but... Uh, uh, Wait a minute, the guys were going to cover it up to his own friend? I don't know. I think they were like when they had to take the guy to the hospital... You got know, it. Got I there. Really say, oh, a stranger shot him in he, the woods. He got shot. Yeah, that's it weird. was a drive by. <laughs> Boy, think about that drive, right? Like, no matter, like, like you know, even if he is your best friend, uh, and you get back, like, you don't know that he's gonna survive. All right, let me give you a scenario. You ready for okay. this? Oh, jeez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three of us, we're on a Bigfoot hunt. Right, I right. get a tip. I'm like, guys, let's go do this. Let's go do this. I knock on your door late one night, right? Yeah, sure. Like, Brian, listen, I've got a map. Uh, it's a five-hour drive. Uh, uh, Justin's in the car. Okay. Slamming down Red Bulls. You got, uh, uh, did, 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 did. I've got the wife and the kids. I mean, can I, uh, let, me, let me ask, let me ask if I get Bond's the time. like, Brian, go, go, no. I, go. Uh, oh, your, your wife and your kids shout in unison, get out of the house. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, fine, right. fine. fine. Hey. All right, let's do this. I'm, I'm willing. Let's, let's go, boys. We hop in the car. We race to Oklahoma or wherever because, you know, the Bigfoot country, right? Yeah. yeah. We go there, and, like, I'm like, hey, listen, I got this credible evidence, okay? We fi- we figure out our campsite. We dig in, and I'm like, all right, we got cameras. We got some other stuff. We got everything we need, right? We're waiting around for Bigfoot to show up because we think he's just going to maybe walk through our campsite yeah, or something, right? Yeah, you never right? know. Yeah. He might Whatever. Eat, we bring some uh, some Jack Link's brand beef jerky. So we're we... sitting around eating our Jack Link's brand beef jerky, right? In your backpack sitting over there. Now I want you to imagine, okay? Yeah. Our cameras are in the backpack. Everything's in the backpack, right? And we're sitting on a log going, well, this is, is kind of nice getting out here, right? We hear a rustling in the trees. Now, uh, I, I, would, I mean, first of all, it's, this could be it, boys. I think I think it's is – it, is it day or night? It's nighttime, isn't it? It's, it's nighttime. Yeah. Okay, okay. Like can that. I pause this real quick? Yeah. Let's just go ahead and hit hit pause. Isn't it amazing 
that in this version of the Bigfoot, how to find Bigfoot, that it is more like Bloody Mary. Like you can just kind of go out to a predetermined spot and hope it shows up by way of just being I'm simplifying there. things for a purpose, Justin. No, Allow no, no, no. but I mean, even then, I, I, for these people that were in Oklahoma, right? What rich Oklahoma history of Bigfoot exists? Well, I don't think it's very thing. likely. We're sleeping in our tents after a hard day of looking for Bigfoot. Are you happy? Yeah. All right, go, go, go. Okay. okay. All of a sudden, we see the tent open, and there is this simian-like visage of Bigfoot, a big shadow lurking in, staring at us, okay? We're all too scared to move. Yeah. I, I would imagine I can weep uncontrollably, though, right? Yes. Is that still within my power? Brian is simpering next to us. Justin thinks it's a dream. I'm just frozen in a cataconic state. Just can't understand if this is real or not. Yeah. Bigfoot's big hand reaches into the tent and starts to feel around. Maybe he picks up some of the Jack Lynx wrappers. <laughs> Maybe he picks up some other food. He Maybe, pulls up some I'm, dirty I'm, socks, smells them. He reaches into Brian's backpack that Bonnie packed for him so he'd be safe. Yeah. And he pulls out something he thinks is kind of interesting, something unfamiliar to him. He doesn't know what it is. Brian's forty-five caliber. Oh, my God. So what's worse than an angry Sasquatch? An angry Sasquatch with a forty-five. <laughs> he doesn't know what this is. He lives in a forest. He just wants to be left alone. He sees a shiny so, metal toy. Uh, no, okay, now, now, yeah. now he's right. got a and gun. Also, Brian, in this moment of fear, and you are feeling yes. singular terror, the yeah. likes of which you have never felt before, can you tell me if you would trade it for Bigfoot instead picking up your iPhone and deleting your Twitter account? Oh, no! No! <laughs> <laughs> Actually, so, the, think about this. If he has a, a forty-five and doesn't know what to do with it, like now all of a sudden it's like, well, he might accidentally shoot any of us. Do we scatter into the woods? possibly into the arms of the rest of the Bigfoots? Or do you just, like, play dodgeball, where you just sort of, like, you back up, you sort of juke left and right, hoping that... We're trapped that... in the tent, right? Okay. And he's got it. It's going back and forth, aiming at us. He kind of figures out, maybe he's seen hunters do this. Maybe he's been shot at before, and he knows how this game works. <laughs> yeah, all right. So okay. uh, 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 does he start saying, like, eeny, meeny, miny, mo? And he's, he's, I would imagine Sasquatch would immediately hold it sideways because it would look yeah, much cooler. It. It's quiet. Uh, it's inappropriate. You know, it's and all of a sudden. <laughs> wait, why, why do, wait, I hate you, Justin. All right. So we're there. We're thinking, like, okay, what is it, a five-pound trigger, six-pound trigger? He's not going to figure that out. Click in, does the safety. Oh, wait, so he knows, knows. He's playing with it. We're frozen in chambers. He chambers, tears. He chambers around. This gun from him. Are any of us still pretending to be asleep? Because I feel like I would pretend to be asleep. <laughs> okay. Now, <laughs> worst worst thing that could possibly happen. Bigfoot pulls the trigger. Yeah. Who gets it? Bam! Right. Okay. And we're like, ah! He lets go of the gun and he runs because he's not he's not used to this noise up close. Bigfoot's scared, right? right, right. Brian, you and I are like. Oh, my God. Thank God he ran away. Oh, oh finally. He's scared. Oh, Justin, aren't you glad? Right, Justin? Right, Justin? Oh. Man, okay, so here's the thing. We go back. like, like okay, so, so, so we drag Justin into, into my pickup truck because uh, I made you get out of your Priuses and get into my pickup truck, which we took up to Oklahoma. And we're driving down south trying to get to the, uh, the nearest hospital. And we got about, um, about 20 minutes to decide what we're going to explain. And uh, I would imagine Justin's conscious, right? So he could be in on this as well. He He's in and out. He's like, Bigfoot, To be fair, that makes it me about as valuable as I would be in this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so... Uh, so, okay, we don't know if he's going to live or die. Um, no. At this point, I, I would imagine, first of all, I would spend, like, the first five minutes of the conversation saying, like, so, so, so like, that was Bigfoot, right? Yeah, and we just back and forth, like, that was Bigfoot, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, like, you saw it, too. Like, we're both agreed. Like, that's what it is, right? And I would imagine we have the dawning horror that that's the last thing we can tell. The actual truth is, is the one thing we absolutely must not tell the folks when we get there. But here's the problem. Justin's a little delirious. He's going to save Bigfoot. Bigfoot's going to come up, and they're going to want to know who shot Justin. 
if we say Bigfoot shot it, it's tempted murder. We're tempted. We try to shoot our pal, and then we try to lie and say, "Oh, Bigfoot did it." If we try to pin it off as accidental, yeah, like, but then yeah, Bigfoot hunt. We're a little crazy. Thought we saw Bigfoot. Shot my buddy. Ugh, I feel horrible about it. <laughs> so, uh, so the question is, so, so we have to do this game theory on what we think Justin's going to say because they're not going to let us get to Justin after they finish operating on him. Like he's, they're going to take a statement from him, and we have to figure out if the story is going to be maybe what maybe. Uh, okay, so here's what we do. We know we assume that when he wakes up, he's going to tell the story as he remembers it of Bigfoot. Fumbling in with the gun. So what we do, we know ballistics are going to show that it's my 45. We're going to show, oh, yeah. it's going to show that, that somebody was going to do it. Here's what we do is you and I agree. We start retraining our brains right now that starting from this day forward, Justin's the only one who's going to remember it as being Bigfoot. You and I are going to remember it as a filthy hippie Greenpeace activist who, saw, who freaked out when he saw our Jack Link's uh, meat. He was a vegetarian. He was shouting crazy stuff and hooting. Had great. He was just shaggy all over. And we make sure we keep saying that so that when Justin wakes up and says, "I mean, I saw Bigfoot or whatever," they'll all be like, "Sure, you did." And then they believe that the hit because I don't think our fingerprints are on it. We probably got out of there. They'll go back and okay. You want this is a criminal conspiracy, right? Like even if you are covering up for the fact that Bigfoot shot me, what you are saying right now is a criminal conspiracy yes justin it is now go back to sleep <laughs> the grown-ups are talking <laughs> i mean are you down for that uh, andrew or, or would you be able to maintain I, I i think it's a scenario and what i'm presenting to you is one possible scenario of what could have happened in oklahoma oh you're saying that that might be the actual that maybe we're that's seeing... what happened maybe bigfoot did it and they're like hey we've got criminal records uh the police are calling us <laughs> thugs and career criminals nobody will ever believe us they know we're stupid enough to go looking for Bigfoot. They'll never <laughs> believe us if we say Bigfoot did it. Man, that's a really good point. It's like, all right, Omar, you got to take it. You got to tell them you did it in an accident, you know? Omar goes home, tells his dad, this is what we told him. He's like, you idiot, throws the gun into the pond. <laughs> that is the dumbest idea I've ever heard. Uh, Man. This is the best Coen Brothers movie ever. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta figure out like how it comes to bite them in the ass later, because I feel I feel like that would actually work, and did work Wait, in Oklahoma. Well, I mean, like, yeah, if, <laughs> if they just have to be national morons, as opposed to you know, like morons, hail murderers, <laughs> manslaughter. So I, I uh, for a moment there, I thought you said uh, national morons. <laughs> That's I'm what I heard. Like, what, what and I'm did thinking, like, say? unlike international morons like <laughs> us. And then I realized so, you meant natural. Natural. I'm like, okay. I'm the moron. <laughs> no, you and me both, see? Okay, all right. International <laughs> morons. <laughs> so what else What else we got? We got to I, I, All I, right. I feel like we've explored this as much as I care to because I'm scared of where we might go from here. <laughs> I might give up so, my uh, plans in advance. Scientists have said that a brand new record for a qubit qubit is a medium of storing a, like a quantum amount of information right so like in a kind of that weird little quantum type state and the new record is now 39 minutes oh okay now keep in mind uh okay uh, bring us up to speed on on the background of this because i feel like you sort of jumped in at the collegiate level for me uh so you, you smaller than a quark is is a qubit you said right no, 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 not small quark. A, a qubit yeah. is a way of the, is a form amount of quantum. Let me let me pull up the article lest I make an idiot of myself. Um, yeah, and, and, and you I have started that level because it's really kind of weird both me and there. Ryan yeah. in terms of knowing what the <laughs> hell you're talking about. Exactly. Uh, yeah, I, I seem to remember reading or hearing something about it, but I don't remember what it, what it is. Um, okay. Speaking of which, I I do want to. All I know is that my initial reaction to what you said is that Cupid's fake. He's made <laughs> up for Valentine's Day. He's What's not funny, a real person. When I heard it, I was just like, "Yeah, you build it thirty nine cubits long and thirty cubits wide, and then the world floods, and you got animals in it." Yes. So, uh, so oh, go ahead. Uh. When you want to build a quantum computer, right, and you want to store information, 
you take some sort of particle or something like that, and you need to suspend it in some sort of state where it can be in like kind of like you know the uh, the you know the, the, the split the, in between two the states, quantum, right? Quantum entanglement, right? Where where or you want it you want it in a superposition where it could be either or, and you find out. Uh, yeah, yeah. So like you know like how particles have spin. Yeah. And you know, like spins is property, or it could be like and it can have like a bunch of different kinds of. It, 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 it could have it could have a, a you know position and spin uh, are are two of the vectors that you normally hear, but there there are others as well. And the moment you find out one, uh, the other one is determined, right? Yeah. So you can you can take you can take a bunch of particles and put them in the same state, like a, they call it like a Bose Einstein condensate. So you, so you can all have that same property. They act as like one massive particle, right? So they can all have the same spin, the same whatever. And then you, and the idea is that if you have if you can have that. Oh. spin state yeah. you can then do quantum computation etc all that which then gets you know i don't understand but anyhow it's important so <laughs> they take like 10 billion phosphorus atoms and they put them in a in a one of these you know the same sort of spin state and they've been able to keep that up to for 39 minutes which is a pretty big deal it means that these things that used to be these extremely fleeting things we didn't think we could hold them for very long would never be practical now you're able to get the state of matter to stay for that long, 35 minute, 39 minutes, and be able to do uh, theoretically get to a point where you can do some kind of computation with it. So right? the, uh, yes, I was trying to remember where I had heard any of this because it sounded familiar, and I realized that uh, that last month I read uh, uh, James Gleick's the uh, the information. That's that's where I was hearing about this. This was near the end of the book when because uh, remember I talked about it as my uh -huh. pick. Uh, started off with African drums, ended with this kind of stuff with massive, uh, you know, infinitely parallel quantum computing. So now, this is where it gets weird. <laughs> because it wasn't already. That was before. Up till now, it's been boring old science. Now yes. let's get now, weird. I'm going to pull up the uh, the uh, the work. It's a little bit freakier. So there's actually an active scientific research project that is trying to figure out. You know, there's that question. We've we've touched upon this frequently. That what if we lived in a matrix. What if we lived in sort of some sort of massive computer system, some quantum system, et cetera? Because we realize that you don't have to replicate the whole universe, just enough parts of it that sentient things recognize and see. Right? Yeah. And now there's actually a, uh, you know, there's a, there's a project to try undergoing to try to figure that out. And the idea is to look for the little glitches, things like that, to look for things that would sort of give lie to the idea that perhaps the universe isn't as uh, is is artificial, and one of the ways they're doing that is they want to look at like basically to try to see like how like I guess the distribution of matter, the distribution of energy, and the goal is to try to see if how much do result do how much do the predicted results if we're actually living in a real universe match up to observed results. Oh, right. Well, I, I, hey, I'm sorry. I missed the implication on that. I feel like you laid it all out, and I, I thought this was still set up, and then I realized that you had given the punchline. And I was I like, like, oh. I actually, Andrew just told us that we're living in a computer system. Rebel! Yeah. Murder your neighbor! There's no consequence! <laughs> well, uh, okay. Uh, so, uh, run run the, the, the logic by me again. So let's say you're living. Let's say we're living in a computer system. Let's equate that to a video game. Right. Okay? Like, yeah. Sure. Let's uh, say give me we're living a game in you like a computer play. system. Right. Uh, sorry. Sorry. Game, Go ahead. Give me a name of a game you like to play. Uh, oh, a game I like to play. Um, uh, uh, orcs must die. It's a little simulation. Orcs come at you and you got to kill them. Okay. Now, or, or like, take like a bigger gun. Like, a, what's a really big, world expansive game you play? Uh, oh, sure, like Grand Theft Auto Five. Yeah, yeah, or, or yeah, that that's and and that's that's without even the the online stuff. Just Grand Theft Auto okay. Five is is all of San Andreas area. Now, if we strap some goggles on your head and I had you play pole position, mm -hmm. going back in time, you'd probably figure out pretty quickly. Sure, sure, this, yeah. This yeah. is a game. Like, wait, no, this is not real. Right. Okay. Strap some goggles on your head, put you into Grand Theft Auto V. It'd take like, a little while. I, I'll tell you, we're already seeing it because there are moments out of the corner of my eye that maybe you're at a sports bar or something, you'll see what's clearly a football game being played, and you'll you'll casually glance over two or three times, and then you realize, oh, wait, that's not a game at all. They're, they're, I mean, that, that's not video at all. They're, they're playing Madden 12 or whatever. Right. Uh, like, so, like, that's already happened casually. Not, not that it would pass any kind of touring test yet. So... 
so you get to this point though where it gets these realities get more and more in detail, more and more in depth. And if we use our our, our strap strap the Oculus to your head and, and connect it to a video camera, strap the Oculus Rift to your head and connect it to a video game. And the Oculus Rift for those of you who have lives is a, uh, <laughs> a, a very cool immersive stereoscopic vision system that's being developed now for like video games, et cetera, and all that. So if I put these on your head and I tell you, oh, one's hooked up to a video feed, one's hooked up to a video game, we're getting to the point where you can create on the fly very, very realistic realities. Right? Absolutely. And if, and if and, you're and, stuck and in not that, only, you're stuck not in only video- Not only simulations of graphics, but simulations of behaviors. You know, recently mm-hmm. with the PS4, and, and uh, the, the main thing that the PS4 touted was uh, that the increased processor ability would allow for extraordinarily realistic physics of, of you know, curved objects bouncing off each mm-hmm. other in highly realistic ways. You know, a great test would be like, okay, if I go into a room and I take one ping pong ball and I drop it and I watch it, we can get the physics right. If I take a thousand ping pong balls, throw them in the air and drop them, well, now we're getting better at tracking that. Yeah. You know? but, but if we all of a sudden start seeing these little patterns pop up and these little behaviors, we're like, ah, you know, this is this this should be more random, essentially. And so well, I guess like that that to me is almost more of it. Right. Because if you walked in, let's say you, you found yourself in a game. Right. And things looked unreal, like not the way that you would normally see them. I feel like we would be more willing to explain that away as us, you know, being not. Oh, so yeah, so what you're saying, right. what you're saying, Justin, is it doesn't even have to be at a hundred percent. If it hits ninety yeah. percent, we blame ourselves on that last ten percent. You're like, man, as I'm proud of it. What 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 matters more is the behavioral patterns. What yeah. matters more is that things are sufficiently random and we are not seeing the same actions over and over and over again. Then we suspect something is wrong with the universe. Whereas if a unreal looking universe behave to a sufficient real, a sufficiently realistic pattern to us, I feel like we would blame ourselves for the other part of it. Now, but well, ke- keep in mind that all of this so far is, is presupposed on the idea that we have ever experienced the world outside of the game. If you grew up and were born into, yeah. you know, if, if you are a, a, a construct of, if you are the only human thing in a Grand Theft Auto V world, you know, you may detect that, that you uh, seem to see things differently or better than everyone else, but to you, it's still the world. Yeah, and I guess what it comes down to, and that's the role of you know science has always been, is to say, okay, what is objective reality? What is perceived reality? Where is the differences coming to play? And now we're at the point where we're saying, okay, you know, if how do we test this? And and you look for the test to say, okay, if it's the game, then there's going to be limitations. You're going to run up to you know if the universe isn't as big as we think it is, if it isn't as you know uh, capable of processing all the you know information the way that it should you know the you know you 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 drop something on the floor every little particle is going to do what it's supposed to do if you have a computer simulated something has to do the math and you're going to be limited by the computer doing that and so what we're getting into now is the idea of figuring out experiments to test that very idea to test that are we in this you know we have an idea model of, of how the universe should work and we start to see this disconnect because things you know uh, don't have the randomness we expect or things aren't the, you know, the speed of light isn't what it should be in a certain place or whatever. You know, what's funny is you could take a conclusion like that and you could sort of spin it in whatever way you want. You know, if, if you get down to the quantum level and it just utterly defies all explanation, no matter how many times in every other situation, it makes sense. But in this one situation, it utterly defies everything. Um, you know, that's, that's that, it's that God of the gaps thing. It's like, that's when, that's when you'll get a whole group of people who say like, see proofs, God's real. And then other people will, will say like, see proof we're all in a video game or other people are like, just calm down. We just haven't figured this out yet. For sure. And I think that, you know, I, we think that when we get the answer to a certain kind of, to a big question that then we go, ah, finally we understand. But then we realize that one, the the answer isn't always as satisfying, or at that point, we're thinking about a much bigger question. We talked about this before. If we find life on Mars, then we're going to go, okay, well, did life come from there and go here? Did it come from here and go there? Or did it come from somewhere else? Or did it develop independently? Yeah. You know, and, you know, if we find that, you know, we find, hey, we found these glitches in the in the matrix, we're going to have some people, I was like, well, you know, it's proof that, you know, God's a lazy programmer. 
that there's a God. <laughs> and then we're going to have other people who might say the other theory that might come up that we might gravitate towards is, you know, or say, listen, there's just a higher intelligence that made this just, you know, they could be, they could be mortal like us who just, you know, hundred years more advanced made a really awesome computer system. Or it could be like, man, is there some weird mathematical phenomenon where, you know, lower order amounts of information create higher order amounts of information and just, you know, I would go on making up a BS explanation, but I can't. But <laughs> uh, Man, I, I honestly don't – I mean, to, to be honest, um, I, I can't – you know, we, we can only speculate what the actual science would say or what the situation would be. Uh, but uh, from what I've seen of human nature, I think you will have in every way – the exact same debates that you have every time we've had you, you, the exact same debate, you know, when we figured out that uh, that the that the Earth revolves around the sun, the exact same debate that we continue that, that we had about uh, quantum physics and, you know, uh, uh, Einstein saying God does not roll dice. And uh, I, I think that it's an increased level of fidelity to the conversation. But I mean, at the end of the day, it's the same. It's the same argument, isn't it? Like, well, like. I Here's here's the difference I would say. If if you're religious, if you if you believe in God and you believe in, you know, the western ocean and God, etc., and you think that he's a real being, you think he's a person that does that, you invest a certain amount of time then in a uh, a concept that other people do not. Prayer. You then spend a lot of time trying to communicate with God, asking for things, thanking him for things because you believe that there's some sort of benevolence or some sort of thing that affects your world. If we find a glitch in the matrix, you know, do we all of a sudden start building Nazca lines? You know, do we start saying, do we communicate with the people running this thing? Because it's like, whoa. Uh, wow. Oh, wow. That's a good point. So what you're saying is when you discover the hole in the system that that essentially proves that like like if there were a way to prove it and peek outside and realize that this is all programmed or whatever, that would by definition mean that that we were programmed and manufactured by a higher intelligence and the question is uh what does that do to everyone's concept of it does does it make you think like oh hooray they finally proved that god exists and now my prayers are definitely answered or well is 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 the act of the ultimate believer to literally communicate with god you know like now now is is the scientist the believer man that's a really and, and, and interesting question. And I mean that we have some God. We might assume, you know what, you know, this could just be a civilization just slightly more advanced than us built this thing. You know, yeah. somebody no, could have built I, this I, next God, week, the, the ran the simulation. God. Yeah, but well, but 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 again, if it if it's a uh, uh, okay, if 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 it's one being, then it's it's the Western notion of God. If it's a civilization slightly more advanced than us, then it's the gods of Olympus. It's still it's it's still the the, the same thing. It's like a, it's it's a a science fictiony confirmation of the reality of those concepts. How about that? Well, but, but I'm saying is like, I guess, I guess for me, like, uh, there's a difference between, you know, an omnipotent God and, and one that's not. And for instance, yes. you know, if, if I find out that I'm inside of a simulation and it's actually the simulations run on a computer system, that's actually my reality is basically a three year old version of this guy's reality. <laughs> You know, because some scientists, some some guys at Google figured out how to do this, and so they made an entire version of our reality that we're stuck inside of, and it's really 2015 right now. Uh oh, wow, that's that's a weird one. That makes me that makes me think of the uh, I don't know. That's you kind of blowing my mind. Oh man. Okay, so that's then, a, like like what if this is one of those things where it's like if you are incapacitated, right, and there's a way to kind of freeze state your brain in a science fiction kind of scenario, right, and then to kind of just like hold place for your body, you are put in a simulation of where society was at the point that you were incapacitated with a projection, a, a, a simulated projection going forward to the point that you would then be put back, you know, like your your, your like human state could then be put, you know, uh, reconstituted. Oh, wow. uh, and and you live the rest of your or that that side track was just the simulation of where the best computers could think the world would Was, go. Wasn't that, um, uh, I, I, I want to say that was a throwaway uh, opening to uh, William Gibson novel. I can't remember which one. Uh, uh, Mona Lisa Overdrive, I think, began with somebody 
who uh, was in a blast. Man, I'm, I'm trying to go all the way back to a half-read book in high school where the guy, uh, the guy was like in a fire or a bomb or something went off. So they had to, you know, his body was in such terrible shape that they needed to tune that up. They needed to essentially send his mind somewhere else. So they ran a simulation of him uh, having uh, a lovely uh, uh, furlough away from World War II at the time. You know, and so the, the entire time he believes he's this guy in, in World War II France or whatever, and he's getting a few days off. And so he's just on this happy holiday while his body Tahiti, is being as rebuilt. They call it on Marvel Avenger, their Marvel Shield. What, what's that? Tahiti, as they call it in Marvel's Shield. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Shield. Yeah. Uh, I only watched the first episode of it. Should I dive Me into too. that? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that but yeah, it's like questions. I mean, because like, so in one scenario we find out that we realize that our God may actually be a 24 year old Stanford graduate trying to get a date this weekend who spends his time looking at upskirt photos from this virtual reality <laughs> he's created. <laughs> you know, they're like, God, answer me. He's like, ah. Uh, I had some. I was using my twenty percent time. <laughs> uh, yeah, man. It's. Uh, I'll tell you what. It. I. I. It. It is. I mean, do you spend? Which is more enjoyable to actually deeply wrestle with these things for you guys, or just talk about and poke around? Like I. I enjoy poking and wrestling and 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 throwing out ideas and going to weird places. Uh, I actually don't derive a lot of ple pleasure from sitting around and thinking deeply about the nature of the universe, mainly because it's kind of like it's a fool's game. It's like if I am a program in the matrix and, you know, whatever, I could spend all my time well, fretting about it or just being a but, badass but here's, program. But here's, here, I'm gonna, here's the sideways thing, okay? Think about this. If we find out that it is, that there is this sort of glitch, there is this thing, and that's the possibility of open up to you, is we say, okay, they're observing us. The Stanford grad is observing us. We can say, hey, do you have other universes? Could we, like, go sideways now? Could we create a multiverse? Could you maybe change a couple fundamental physical, you know, you know, physical constants, maybe make it easier for us to go fast in the speed of light? Just give us these little tweaks. So essentially pray. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> build, build, like I said, NASA lines. Start building monuments and stuff. Trying to get his attention. Say, listen, please, please. What do you want? We'll sacrifice whatever you need. Man, I feel like, uh, uh, okay, I don't know. I'm smelling like, like the ending to a, a Battlestar Galactica series right here. Like, I feel like we're going to end up actually oh my God, in the what past. What a better ending to Battlestar Galactica that would have been. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Bob Newhart waking up would have been a better ending. Did you guys see? Speaking of which, did you see the uh, the 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 alternate ending to uh, Breaking Bad that was yeah. made? I almost kind of feel like the Newhart ending is like now de rigueur yep. for shows that end. Like because Lost did a Newhart ending where Damon Lindelof and Carlton Cuse woke up in the same bed uh, for Jimmy Kimmel after Lost ended. Oh, I but didn't now see that. it's just the thing where like. Shows that are revered by critics and and you know the the smarts of television watching you know uh, demand that a yeah. New what was that really happens. cool video game show that was online that did a? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. No, we wrote a new hard ending before it came on. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, although I thought that was didn't Dallas do that too? Uh, I think Newhart did it. Or Dallas did like a whole season was a dream. No, no, no. Dallas uh, basically wrote off Jr. getting shot in the shower as a dream, but it wasn't like new art was specific. Right, right. That. It was the punchline at the end of the whole the series. Show, right. And then done another show. Got it. Where like, yeah, like Lost didn't make as much sense as, as Breaking Bad did because of Malcolm in the Middle. Right. Uh, although I thought I, I, th I thought like it went on a little bit long, like like you got the joke in the first minute and then they made it two and a half minutes longer. Yes. I kept waiting like when like the other cast of Malcolm in the middle of the run in and I kind of just scrubbed ahead. Yeah, I, I did, too. And then and then I'm, thinking, I'm like, what's that weird shape? And then I just jumped there. I'm like, oh, the hat. And I'm like, well, let me see. Oh. Like, oh. Yeah. Well, but like, you know, you're going to get everybody together and put some cameras there. You know, you got to shoot for more than 30 seconds. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, man, can, can we, can we, I don't, I don't know. Can we do picks? Cause I got something I want to talk about. No, Brian, we're never doing picks again. Picks are dead. Oh, That's a bummer. Of course we can do picks, Brian. Uh, you well, can do two picks. I just don't, like. I, like if it were up to me five minutes into the show, I'd be like, let's talk picks. <laughs> it's, uh, uh, I just never want to jump in too fast. Um, 
we somebody uh, you, you probably got the tweets just like me talking about a movie that this guy said was straight out of weird things. It says though they listened to our arguments. And I'm sad because given when the arguments were, I have to assume the movie was made before our arguments, <laughs> which might make it sound like 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 uh, this, like I, I me personally was cribbing notes. Uh, but I finally watched uh, the Europa Report, which is on Netflix streaming right now. It's um, it is a, uh, a a lower budget movie, I would assume, uh, with un, uh, relatively unknown actors. Uh, the acting is is good. It's it's not, right. Did the way the way that you said that makes it like well, uh, she's a big boned girl no, uh, I, with a great personality. I'm, okay, let me let me let me put it this way: if I was just flipping channels, um, I would uh, I would uh, I don't know. It's 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 a, it's a cast you've never heard of with with well, Charlton Copley. Who's that? I. I I rest my case. District nine. <laughs> I, I I see. I didn't. Elysium. I fine. That's great. Uh, I started I started both those movies. I didn't. I didn't recognize them. I wouldn't recognize them. I didn't recognize him in this at all. Uh, but uh, uh, man, I don't know which one he was now. Wow, that's that's how dumb I am. Is he the main character in District Nine? Yes. yes. Yeah. He's uh, the the Fukin prawns guy. Yeah. Okay. Well, he looks. Uh, Banter, bigger burger. Tricked me. Tricked me. Uh, at any rate, the po the point is that's not the focus because it's it's also it's like it's like a found it's it's got pieces of found footage and new stuff like you see Neil deGrasse Tyson talking you know in a lecture about how you know and it's from an actual lecture he gave talking about how he'd love to go explore your open see what's inside. Uh, but the conceit that you find Murdoch out. Murdoch in the A Team remake. <laughs> <laughs> I had to look that up on IMDb. <laughs> all right. So so uh, the the point is they discover, and this is all very early in the movie. This is all the establishing stuff, so it's not really a spoiler. Uh, there's a reason that they go to Europa, but it takes place in the very near future, um, and they give a lot of scientific consideration to what the point of a mission to Europa would be, what they would want to find out, how they would go about doing it, and they make a good excuse for, for why they need to send people. Uh, and 80 days into the mission, uh, and this is the opening scene in the movie, uh, 80 days into the mission, their communication just goes completely down. There's a solar flare. And so now you have this ship that's, uh, that's got a, a four year mission round trip. It's got to get out there and come back. Uh, and no way for anyone at home to know, you know, they know what the plan is. So they know when supposed stuff is supposed to happen. No way for them to know if, and when it can happen. And this movie is, uh, uh, it is the official, uh, they don't say how at the beginning of the movie. They say, uh, for the first time ever, we have this this information. Uh, here is what we've been missing for the last two years. And it gives you the story of what happened. Uh, everything highly plausible, highly scientific, very well thought out. Uh, all of the questions that, that, that we three have been talking about a couple of weeks ago, they, they address in there in, I think, very believable ways. Uh, and the difficulties that they have, I think, are very believable. Um, as, as a movie, it was okay. Uh, pacing it got a little slow for me at times. As a intellectual exercise, it was utterly riveting from beginning to end. And uh, there are parts of it that I get uh, complete goosebumps thinking about. And I would... Uh, I, I I would recommend it. It's it's streaming right now on Netflix. Beyond this, I feel I fear I'll get into spoiler territory. But I would really I'd really like you guys to watch it and tell me what you think. Well, Brian, as a matter of fact, the other night I decided to watch. Did you? The Roper. And four minutes into it, I realized it's an entire movie made of found footage with lockdown shots. And I said, I can't handle this. I can't handle this. I was so close to think, putting to think about like how like deal breakers for me are like found footage films, and I, I at some point I will watch it. I really want to like this. I want to watch this, but I just was like the, the only like, the only found. To, there's, there's, there's to maybe, be fair, there's maybe, I will say this: there's, there's maybe expanded. five ten minutes of found footage in there. Everything else is is the story. I, 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 I was scrolled ahead. This. Everything was like supposed to be an internal spaceship, you know, spaceship cam. Or something. Everything looked like it was supposed to be these internal lockdown shots from inside there. There's a lot of those. <laughs> I will just say this, and I have known Andrew for a very long time. I've discussed pop culture and movies and television shows with him ad nauseum for many, many, many years. 
there is a a trajectory that you need to break through for Andrew as a viewer. That if you get outside of, I would say, the 15 or 20 minute mark, because like I'll talk to him and he'll watch stuff that I won't watch, just as like on general principle, like like you know, one day I would do Arby's with Andrew. And he's like, well, I rewatched the prequels, and I'm like, <laughs> was it gun to your head? Like, did you need to re? Like, was it like Nazis had your family and they forced you to rewatch them? No. He rewatched him because he he wants to understand what had what had gone on. He will watch that. But there is a large, a very very a large pile of movies that I have talked to Andrew about or, or television shows that's like couldn't watch it. First fifteen minutes had to get out. I just understood that there were there were dangerous patterns of behavior that were happening in this movie that I could not see being broken <laughs> outside of the first fifteen minutes. Prequels, huh? <laughs> I, I, my thing is like, I'll go back to stuff though, because I try, I want to be fluid in my opinion. I'll say, you know what? I'm entirely open to the idea that I was in the wrong. And like I said, I'll go back to your Oprah report at some point. I just got to go into the, like, now that I'm like, okay, it's, I got to sit through a found footage. And, and once I get my mind around that, I can often, I can go back and I can do that. And, and I just watched a summer blockbuster again and started watching parts of it to say, okay, I liked this part. I liked this part and trying to sort of break down where it just fell apart for me because I don't, I'm not a guy that wants to live as a hater. It wants to be this like, ah, it sucks. Rah, 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 rah. You know, because if other people like something, I go, I want to find out what they liked about it because I want to like it. I'm a guy that wants to like a bunch of things more than dislike. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, I'll tell you this much in the, in the RPG video game of movie making, someone spent all their skill points on, scientific plausibility story. There, there's parts of your Oprah report that are more believable and uh, that, that that's, I, in fact, I would say that there's entire chunks of it, partly, partly because it's an area that is less established that I believed much easier uh, than gravity even. And obviously gravity, you know, did, did an amazing job of trying to be accurate on everything. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I look, I, I, it's one of those, I look forward to watching it when I'm able to go, okay, it's <laughs> Just, just, just I could do this. I could do this. I could do this. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Come on. So, uh, do you got a pick? I got a pick. Uh, I do. Yeah. Uh, I will recommend uh, Double Down, uh, the book Game Change 2012. It's from the same authors who wrote uh, the story of uh, the 2008 election, Game Change, uh, which was made into the movie, which oddly was made into like. I think the third most interesting story of that incredible book, uh, which focused all on Sarah Palin as opposed to the best and most interesting story of that book, which was about John and Elizabeth Edwards, which may go down as the least heralded but yet most interesting uh, political presidential race story of our lifetime. Do, do you feel uh, like it's... Because you've hinted, you made hints about why this is, and I, and I think you're about to do so again. But do you think it's because there just needs to be distance between the events and the storytelling? No, I, I just don't think that anybody wants to talk about it necessarily. Because, you know, number one, the fact that John Edwards was carrying on an affair and impregnated somebody during a presidential campaign borderlines on, like, what we are seeing now with Rob Ford in terms of somebody who has just, like, negligence in terms of understanding you know, where he is versus what his actions mean. Right. Uh, and then couple that with what was kind of groundbreaking in the initial Game Change book, which was the fact that Elizabeth Edwards, although uh, notably and, and correctly receiving sympathy for being a breast cancer survivor and later she was taken by the disease, may or may not have been a fairly terrible person to everybody surrounding her, including the campaign staffers. So, uh that was to me my favorite part about it. They're great storytellers, uh, and and certainly the Palin part that was made into the movie was was very interesting and great, uh, excellently reported. Game Change 2012 is if you are a political junkie like I am, uh, excellent. They do uh, they they as happens, the people who got the story last time oftentimes get access to the best sources the next time around, and this is an extraordinarily well sourced book. Uh, I will just spoil two of my favorite moments for it that will hopefully tempt you to go and get it. Number one, an entire chapter devoted to the fact that the Obama administration through its first term could not contain leaks, uh, which is no doubt sourced by many leaks to the authors of the book <laughs> that are reporting about the fact that nobody can contain any leaks. 
And number two, uh, the revelation, and this is something that uh, I did not know, uh, that John Huntsman and Mitt Romney, both uh, primary candidates for the Republican nomination, uh, have a deep-seated animosity toward each other that stemmed not only from the fact that they are from two prominent Mormon families, but also that when Mitt Romney was running in 2008, he was counting on Huntsman, then the governor of Utah, to give him his endorsement. Uh, Huntsman wound up giving it to John McCain. And as it is described in the book, Mitt Romney called John Huntsman and gave him the blistering, vile insult as best as he in his Mormon skin could muster, which was, your grandfather would be ashamed of you. <laughs> uh, which I was delighted. Shots fired. So, <laughs> boom, shots fired. Uh, you know, feel the burn. Your grandfather would be ashamed of you. Uh, Game Change uh, 2012, it's called Double Down. Uh, it is very, very, very good. And I would uh, encourage anybody to go pick it up. My pick. So I've been a little busy over the past year. Um, I've heard that. Yeah. I mean, Doing to the what? point that, like, I, I don't trust I got you. rid of my RSS feeds. Um, I saw only a handful of movies, you know, was barely aware of a lot of things going on. I mean, I was, like, totally oblivious. But, like, I was kind of very actively involved in uh, now that I can tell you what it was about, uh, working on the show, Don't Trust Andrew Main, coming this January on a and Facebook.com slash Don't Trust Andrew Main. Like and subscribe. Please, please do so if you're here listening. Uh, so uh, we had a, have a new video up, by the way. Um, so uh, I didn't know this came out, and I was a big, big, big fan back in the day when I first saw this. And then it's one of those shows that every now and then the fans get back together, and there's a support for it, and, and you get – either another season or, you know, like it's kind of like, you know, a three episode like TV movie or whatever. And, and I always love the show and I'm talking about Red Dwarf. So those of you who are not familiar with Red Dwarf, it's kind of a very Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy-esque kind of show that aired in Britain. And it's about these, uh, the last human in the universe um, after on a starship after there's this horrific accident that kills the entire crew and he gets put in stasis and when he comes out of it everybody's dead his only companion is a hologram of his worst enemy and then the the a cat that looks like a human that's like the the last of his species the guy had a pregnant cat that he left before he got put in a stasis for like a billion years and the cats <laughs> multiplied and multiplied and evolved until there was a humanoid like cat walking around and then a robot and and it's neat because it's like there's like, you know, the first several seasons, there's like never any aliens or anything like that. They came up with some really clever science fiction scenarios involving just anything else that could go on there. It's, it's you know, dated show with laugh tracks and stuff like that. But they actually brought back last year. They went back and they did, uh, I think, like eight more episodes on the TV network Dave there that did pretty well. And they did a season before that was like kind of like a back to earth kind of episode, mm -hmm. which didn't quite, it wasn't as fun as the show was. And what they did for this one is they said, you know what, let's go back to the early show. They have the laugh track and all that, which kind of feels dated, but they got the jokes and the timing a lot like they did before. And it was fun. And so Red Dwarf season X or season 10 is on iTunes. Um, I enjoy it. You can watch other episodes of Red Dwarf on Netflix and it's an acquired taste. Uh, you're, a lot of people are not going to like it. A lot of people will like it. And if you're familiar with it, then you, you know what I'm talking about. But anyway, I was excited to see Red Dwarf Season 10 was there. They may do a Season 11. So Wow. Red Dwarf goes like back to what? Uh, do you remember when it started? Was it the 80s or 90s? Maybe late 80s, early 90s. We could, If only there was a way to find out. If only we had the answer to every <laughs> question we could come up with and the sum yeah. total of human knowledge. I know. Isn't this, here's the funny thing. is uh, 1988, 25 years ago. Wow. wow. That's a Which, gig. Yeah, and, and using my example, that would be like, uh, you know, a show from like 1963. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, I married the car or whatever, you know. Um, so uh, I was glad to see that. I hope they come up with more of it. Um, that's my pick. Right on. Yeah. So, uh, I get, man, anything to announce? I feel like we fixed all the world's problems. We shot uh, Justin. If you haven't picked up the 
Night Attack live comedy album. I highly recommend it. Meanwhile, if you're paying attention to Justin Robert Young's Twitter feed, yeah. Mr. Young has a Christmas Oh, yeah. Thing. What what website do you go to? Uh, Bit.ly slash go home Santa is where you find uh, the page where you can sign up for the mailing list. Uh, if you have already signed up for the Night Attack mailing list, then congratulations. You are already... Uh, in line to get all the new information for uh, Go Home Santa, You're Drunk. Several sh- several short stories about Santa Claus that I have written and will be out in ebook and audiobook format. The audiobook format, uh, which, to be brutally honest with you, may be available before the ebook version is. Uh, it was scored by Andrew Allen. Uh, he of Smooth Federation and uh, uh, just these these other uh, great uh, jazz uh, albums that he's released. He did one on video games uh, last year as well. So, and keep in mind to to put it in perspective. Uh, w- during Nerdtacular, he did a live performance. Where we would cover all kinds of crazy songs, including uh, Skrillex tunes as jazz covers. It was yeah. extraordinary. Well, and and his involvement in the project was really. Uh, I had sent him one track to do a jazz score for, and he wound up just scoring the entire book. Like there was, uh, he just said, well, let me just do all of it. And I was like, okay, sure. And and it turned out to be really, really good. I mean, I don't read a lot of things with my eyes. I pretty much read everything with my ears. So I would, if, uh, if there were somebody else releasing this, I would, get the audio book and tell everybody I read it. So So, I would highly recommend everybody do that because it's very well done. The, the fact, okay. So, so you and I had talked about like, there's so much music and it integrates so well with the stories that you were considering calling it an album instead. Well, there's a lot that kind of went into that. Like part of it is just also me really liking what the scored version was and kind of thinking that it was that then looking at the words that I had written alone yeah. were kind of embarrassing. <laughs> so uh, I, I almost wanted to just like have that be the only thing. Like if I could only cut out the best and present that to everybody, would that be better than releasing everything? Uh, that was kind of what, what that idea was that. And also it's like, you know, we've released albums before people know me as somebody in an audio medium. So Releasing it as a Christmas as album a book. would be, yeah, I, no, think, no, I think, more right. of a understandable idea than me releasing a short story compilation when I've never released a short story compilation before. So, uh, but you know, when it when it comes down to it, I think there are people who want to read things and would would rather read things than think of it in like, you know. Whereas, probably the three of us who have all listened to, I mean, I, I think Andrew probably reads more stuff, uh, you know, in in a more traditional sense than. Than, uh, than me and you do, Brian, like uh, a lot of people look at like, oh, wait, this is an hour and a half. I have to commit an hour and a half to consume this thing. I would prefer not to do that. I'll read it at my own pace in this other version. So uh, I do want to get it out to people. I'm very, very proud of, of uh, the stuff that I, that, I, that I put down and I got great notes from I, I don't want to so. interrupt the meta discussion of reading versus the audio version. Can I talk to the thing itself? Okay. Yes, please. Sure, I, go ahead. I love what what Justin has done here. I've, I've maybe seventy percent of it. Have I read? Uh, yes, seventy. Okay. Yeah. There it is. It is a wonderful, wonderful cross section from the pithy to the poignant. It is. It is a a. Uh, very, very, very entertaining, and 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 there's laugh out loud stuff here. Then there's really, oh, that's really kind of a cool kind of thing, or that's a very, uh, I'm going to use pointing again because I can't think of another word. I very, I think it's great. I think that I highly recommend it. anybody who's got ear holes out there or eyeballs get it. Um, if you like Justin Robert Young, you should get it. If you don't like Justin Robert Young, you're a you communist. Hey, you should still get it. Um, uh, even if you, and it's, it's not about Christmas, it's about the concept of Christmas and Santa and everything else. It's, and so it's, it's a, I, I highly encourage you guys to do this cause I want to see more of Justin writing. So, uh, well, I'll tell you what, if you want to get a taste of it, you go to jurytalks.com, J U R Y T A L K S.com on the latest episode of the jury podcast. I, uh, released or leaked, I don't know what it would be, but, 
Uh, I leaked. <laughs> I leaked it. In, I deliberately put it out on a podcast. Uh, so uh, Christmas Florida is uh, that will be what will be on the album itself. And I wanted to kind of get out to people that were, you know, friendlies, like people who follow me on Twitter or uh, otherwise like things that I do. Uh, one that wasn't funny. So this is not necessarily a, la- a funny one. It's more of a creepy one. But I really loved what Andrew did with the score. So uh, Andrew Allen, not Andrew on the show. Yeah, I have no um, yeah we hate what you did with the score, Andrew. <laughs> yes, he did nothing with the score. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, go ahead and, and check it out. It's, uh, I, I, was, I was very happy with how it came out. You can go ahead and take a listen to it. And I guarantee if you like that, you will like the rest of it because that is the most not how people would think of the things that I do uh, byproduct of that. There are a lot of other things that are very madcap and silly and, and, and stupid, which I do very much enjoy doing. And I think that there is some really funny stuff, including something that either uh, Brian or Andrew have heard, which I, I recorded as kind of a last minute addition to it, which is uh, basically my take on uh, Alex Jones's explanation of Santa Claus. Um, so SantaWars.com is the... Uh, <laughs> The last, uh, the last track on the album, which you'll be able to find. And I'll probably release that one early because it's very much red meat for the uh, chat realm, weird things, NSFW crowd. All right. I have one more thing to plug, okay? Go. Are some of you guys out there like, here's, here's, here's the problem with being friend or family to me. When the holidays come around, people ask me, what do I want? And I'm like, eh, I don't know. I can never think of what I want, right? Yeah. And it, it's a, it always drives my parents mad, drives everybody else mad. And then when Christmas comes and I don't get what I wanted, I'm upset. Nobody wants to have to deal with me. I'm like, well, this is unacceptable. I think many of you may be like that too. Okay. I'm going to tell you what you want and I'm going to tell you what you do. What you want, I'm going to tell you where to go. And then you're going to take the URL and you're going to send it to your family and you're going to tell them this is where to go. Get me this. You're going to make me happy, you're going to make somebody else happy, this is how you do this. Very simple. Very, very easy. What you need to go is you need to go to scamstuff.com. Hey! Stuff there, okay? I have bought stuff. I have actually purchased with my hard-earned money stuff on there that I think is cool, like the lockpick ring, for example, which actually is pretty sweet. I actually show people what this is because it's really cool. There's a lot of neat stuff on there, and I'm going to plug Brian's stuff because I like to plug. They actually can do gift cards now, so you can say, hey, get us some gift cards, whatever, on there. There's a lot of cool stuff. Brian has really curated some quality stuff here that's not just like throw his face on a T-shirt, although that would be totally cool. (laughs) These are workable, usable things designed for you to be able to go out there and have fun with. He's got you know the Mark Dex. You've got expanded shells. You've got all this other stuff. It's not a bunch of just, hey, let me throw everything at you magic wise or scam size or whatever. Let me pick some stuff together that's really useful that you may have seen on his scam school videos. And I highly, highly, highly recommend if you're thinking about what do you want, get one of the scam packs if they're not sold out. Uh, yeah, know? we're actually, uh, we just got word that we get the, we were short on one ingredient for the scam pack. So, uh, uh, so we, that'll be in on Friday. So we're about to have don't get the scam pack. <laughs> no, I mean go ahead and get it now. We're we'll no, get them out. Yeah, wait till Friday. This is weirdo. <laughs> this is what this is what you do. This is how, how you make three people very happy on Christmas or Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, uh, Hobbit Mass, or whatever you want to celebrate. <laughs> go there, Hobbit see mass. something you like, send it to a friend or relative. Say, hey, I would love this. Okay, so then here's what happens: Christmas Day, Hanukkah whatever you open up there's this awesome present you got you're like yay i got this you're happy your friend or loved one's happy because you gave them a gift of making it easy to figure out what to get you and you know brian's happy (laughs) so everybody's happy and i'm happy that you did that well thank you very much so by the way listen if you want to do for hanukkah man you better move your butt like that thing (laughs) happens on thanksgiving this year it's a good point, man. Uh, no, thank you very much for yeah. saying that, Andrew. I'm, I'm really Scam excited for how it's coming out. Look at this. Look at this 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 hieroglyphic pop-up <laughs> shot glass thingy. The rogues flask with all the stuff in there. That's amazing. <laughs> all right. I can only take I so mean, much. I, I can't stomach it anymore. Just so I can carry that around. 
I'll tell you what. I actually, I remember at Nerdtacular, uh, I had brought that flask to fill with Ruinum, uh, which, by the way, is available at Ruinum.com. Let's just keep the plug for it rolling. Yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, Brian was like, hey, let me see that. It was like, <laughs> oh, yeah. I think we're going to do something with this. And then it's the rogue flask, like, uh, like three weeks later, because you had been like, you know, you, you were thinking about that. And it is, it's a great product. Let me just say this. Last thing we'll say about scamstuff.com. Uh, I can't believe that some of these book tests are still available. If you are, and I know with Brian and Andrew on the show that there are many magicians that listen, uh, to this show. If you do mentalism and you don't own Brian's book test, and you're an idiot. Hey, how about this? Let me put in a sealed envelope. You're an idiot. And I'll be right. Because you should have it. Because it's great. Uh, yeah, man. Thanks. That's really nice of you guys. Hey, that's what we do. Uh, but yeah. seriously, though, I was just thinking about that. The fact that, like, I'm like, I'm always wait till the last minute. I'm always a pain in the ass. And I'm thinking, like, you know, I'm like, I bought a couple things there that I really dig. And then I'm like, oh, I bet other people would like that stuff, too. So take a look there. Well, it's, it's one of those things you, you sort of um, you, you curate a list of things all uh, year long and then and then it hits you around midsummer like, oh, crap, this is going to be a really good place to buy gifts for people. And so, you know, you, you start to, to hone in on that. And I think that's a that's a big part. I'm, I'm really hoping that um, that it's a good holiday season for for everyone, that we make it easy for you guys and and the store continues to grow. And I will personally vouch I use the stuff that's on here, so. Yeah. And I got and a TV I show, personally so. vouch that I know somebody who uses that stuff. <laughs> All right. I feel like we got to wrap things up now. <laughs> All right. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you for joining us. It's been awkward. No. You got to do it. Do it. Come on. You're it's ruining the show. It. What more do you guys No, for? dude. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Show's over, folks. Go home. Do it. Do it. Do We're it. not Do leaving. It. This is the end. Do it. Got to drive me nuts. This is really weird. Say it. Not close enough. You got you to gotta nail it. How's it been, Andrew? Yeah. It's been, been... really whimsical. <laughs> <laughs> it's been weird. Base drop. <laughs> awesome. Brian, we're good for me getting that cut of all those sales, right? Yeah, Just no, that's, uh, I'll be right? kicking that back yeah. to you shortly oh, here, boss. Yeah, you're in. Yeah, you got it's, that. It's okay, good. just make it sure. Oh, man. All right, going to save this to uh, 11, 18. Uh, so uh, are we still live right now? Yeah, we're still live. All right. Uh, I especially love people who tweet out, sorry, not going to watch your podcast thing. I got something better to do. <laughs> really? I apologize. Yes. Sorry about that, guys. People we love say stuff like that. Hold on. Let me see. <gasps> Simone. <laughs> She's not here right now, so she'll never know. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> like, no, nah, not going to do it. Watching Man of Steel. What? <laughs> Uh, pretend lie to us hey is there a is there a utility now i'm seeing something else now I, there's someone wrong on the internet uh <laughs> uh is there a utility that I, like i remember like how often do you tweet.com would say how often you tweet um but then it's not working for me right now i can't find it someone's accusing me he said someone says i want to follow you again but every time I opened my timeline, there it was, 100 tweets, 50 from you. And that strikes me as very unlikely because I looked it up once and I think I had like 10, like I at reply everyone, which, but, but he wouldn't see any of that unless he followed everyone I was replying to, which is unlikely. <laughs> Bill Meeks says, sorry, can't watch weird things. Busy not watching weird things. Well, as long as you got a good Fair reason. enough. <laughs> Although... Wait a second. Mm. He just Although, timed let that. Ask, <laughs> let me ask you this, Sandra. If Simone had said, uh, sorry, guys, can't watch weird things. I know it's embarrassing, but I'm watching Blade Runner for the first time. Would your reaction have been different? Uh, no comment. 
<laughs> All right, I am going to wrap things up because uh, I, I got roped into uh, uh, part of the reason I was late getting set up is because uh, Chad called and was just like, uh, Chad was like, hey, do you want to help me uh, host this week in YouTube? And uh, and I was like, well, I've, I've got to do weird things. That'd be a long, that'd be an awful lot of podcasting. And, it, and he's like, and it's, it's a good thing he did because Lamar was out and his replacement host had like severe connectivity issues and dropped out like like 80 percent of the uh, of the thing. So it just became the Chad and Brian show about YouTube, which uh, which I was really glad that, that I was able to be there for him. And, and uh, endorsing the Google Plus comment system. Uh, oh, I am. I still continue to. I will. I'll state that. That's a I fact. heard that Bob was building an army. Uh, yeah, using tools that they couldn't use on the old comment system. That's that's why I know this is going to blow over, because all the ways people are, are getting creative to say how much they hate the Google Plus system, it uses the Google Plus. They, the ASCII art, you couldn't do that before. Other people are like, let me tell you in five paragraphs how much Google sucks. Oh, wait, I couldn't type more than one paragraph before. And then other people are like, let me link you to this video that really explains why Google sucks. Oh, wait, I couldn't do that before. So it's like, if it did flip back today, they'd be, they'd be pissed off about all the features that they're losing uh it's yeah. one of the things i have no horse in that race at all <laughs> yeah uh yeah uh all right gentlemen let me play let me play something hot and new right straight out of 14 years ago <laughs> all right bye bye oh i love reservoir dogs <laughs> 